I have a letter here that I want to be able to address and to send to all my clients that are in my Outlook contact database here. And I can do it one of two ways. I can do it the slow way, address it to everybody one at a time. I mean, the only thing that's going to be changing is just the person's name, like Dear Bob, Dear John, and perhaps maybe their address that I'm sending it to. The other way that's a lot faster is to use the mail merge feature. And you can learn more about this, at least in more detail, by watching my Microsoft Word Level 2 training video. But to merge all of those contacts into a single letter here, that will create a copy of this letter automatically for each different client in my contact database. First of all, go ahead and create a letter. Once you have that letter saved, I'm going to go ahead and close out of it. The letter's in my exercise folder on the desktop. Next, to start the mail merge, go back to your Outlook program here. And for this mail merge to work, you can do it one of two ways. You can either merge all the contacts into that letter that we just looked at and create a copy for each different contact here or you can select the contacts that you would like to be part of the mail merge. In other words, I don't want myself in that mail merge. So what I'll do is for only those that I want in the mail merge, I'll select them. In fact, let me come over here under the current view and change it to phone list, because I also don't want the IT department in there. What I'll do is I'll select, click on the first contact, and either hold the shift key and select all the contacts in between carry and up to Hyacinth, and then use the control key and select a different contact down below. So all the contacts that I have selected, I want to include in my mail merge, okay? And then once I have them selected, come up here, click on the Tools menu, and go down to Mail Merge. Now by default, you can see that only selected contacts will be included in the mail merge. If you want to include all of them, then just go ahead and select all of them, and it'll bypass what you have selected here. Next, what fields do you want to merge into this letter that we created? All contact fields, or contact fields in the current view, like the full name, company, file as business we'll leave it as all contact fields and then the document is it going to be a new document or an existing document I'm going to go ahead and select that remember it's in my exercise folder on the desktop let me click browse and there it is my exercise folder on the desktop I called it the clients merge letter you can call it whatever you want your document could be my marketing campaign in any case when you find it double click so you can link it to that document so when we're finished, when we click OK, it'll start the mail merge process. But before we do that, note that the merge options is the document type. I'm creating a form letter or mailing labels, envelopes, or catalog. And I want to be able to merge it to a new document, not the printer or email. So when I'm finished, go ahead and click OK, and it starts the merge process. OK, two things have happened. First of all, our document opened. And second of all, our document is linked back. It doesn't show it here, but it is linked back to those contacts in our Outlook program. What we need to do here is to continue the merge process step by step, is to come up here on the Mailings tab, click on the Start Mail Merge drop-down arrow, and go step by step. Now, over here in the Task pane, it skips from step 1 to step 3. Now if you want to know why it skipped to step 3, you can click on Previous, the starting document, use the current document, we already have a current document that it opened up for us, and then in step 1, what do you want to create? A letter, email messages, envelopes, labels. So that's why it skipped, and I'm going to click Next to go to step 3. And again, you can learn more about this in my Word Level 2 Mail Merge training video. What you want to do is you want to click Next and go to step 4 of 6. Now next it says to write your letter. Well, we've already written our letter. The only thing we need to add to the letter are those merge fields, those variable fields that, let's say, we'll add in the person's first name or last name from our contact database. So every time there's a different name, it'll create a new letter or a copy of this letter, but with that new person's name, first name, last name, address, and so on. Now, to keep this really simple, when you write a letter, usually you have the date and then you have an address block of the company you're addressing, and then you have dear and then the first person's name or last person. Let's go ahead and add what's called an address block. Go ahead and click in an area where you want to add that block, and then over to the right in the task pane, go ahead and click on address block, and you get a preview here. In other words, over to the left, you can choose which format you'd like the address block to be in. You can have it as Mr. or Mrs. If you don't care for the Mr. or Mrs., then go ahead and select a different block. Where it just says Joshua, it just includes the person's first name. If you look over in the preview window, it just has Hyacinth. If I go to first and last name, Josh Randall, then if they do have a last name, it'll be listed here, Hyacinth Bucket. And then to include a title like Mr. or Ms., you can go ahead and select those. Again, even though you select the format here, if you don't have it in your contacts database, Mr. or Mrs., it won't pull here. You can go ahead and click on the next arrow to see what the next one looks like, and then the next one. And it looks like the only one who has an address is Carrie here. 
So what you see here is what you get. If you made a mistake and these people don't have addresses, then you want to cancel the whole thing, go back to your contact database, and then type in addresses for all the contacts. Or if this is fine with you, you can go ahead and continue. So this is what's going to be pulled in. When I'm finished, click OK. There's the address block. That little coding right there, that field with those little um, angle brackets on either side, means to pull in the full address field, beginning up at the top with the person's name. What I can do is go ahead and hit enter a couple of times, and next I want to be able to insert what's called a greeting line, like dear first name or dear last name. I've got all the space here. Let me hit the delete key a couple of times to pull it up. Then come over here and click on the greeting line link. And there you go. The greeting line format is dear if they have a title, Mr. or Mrs. Randall. You can click on the drop down arrow, and instead of saying Mr. or Mrs., you can scroll down and just do first name, Joshua. And then down below, you can look in the preview, Dear Jason, click Next. Click back, Dear Carrie. If you don't like that and you want their last name in there as well, then go ahead and select Dear Josh, and then there's Dear Melanie Curtis. So always look to your previews to make sure that what you have up here selected as your format is what you want and can see down in the preview window. When you're finished, go ahead and click OK. Now this is a very simplistic letter, the address block and the greeting line. You do have additional merge fields that you can pull in, but not over here in the task pane. You'll have to come up here to the Mailings tab to the right and Insert Fields group, and then click on the Insert Merge Field button, where you have a listing of all the additional fields that are available that you can pull in to your mail merge document here. You can view it as a database field, or what's easier to read is by address fields. So whatever you see here, you can select and pull in as a merge field. You can pull in their business fax, their home phone number, uh, their spouse or partner's first name and last name. Like I said, this is a little bit more in depth, and I want to leave that to Microsoft Word Level 2, the mail merge training video. So to keep it simple, we do have our address and our greeting line. Let's go ahead and click Next and go to Step 5 of 6, where we can go ahead and preview this. So this is what the mail merge letter is going to look like when we print this out for Melanie Curtis. It'll have her name and then the name of her company. If I want to take a look at all the recipients over here in the task pane or up here in the preview results, you can click on the next arrow and it will toggle to the next person. There's Carrie and her address, name of her company, next. So after we finish previewing this and we like what we see, if we don't, then we can go to the previous step, click on previous and be able to change our merge fields around, rewrite the letter. But if we're good with this, let's go ahead and click Next and go to the final step, step 6 of 6, where we can print our letters right now, or we can click on Edit Individual Letters, which will open up a letter for each contact that we can go into separately and make personal comments. For example, click on Edit Individual Letters, and we want to do it for all letters, click OK. Opens up a new document, but this document's going to contain, well, in this case, four pages because we have one page for each client. So for Hyacinth Bucket, I can come down here and type in an extra personal note for her. And then go down to the next page, to the next contact for Melanie Curtis, and type in another personal note just targeted towards her. When I'm finished, I can go ahead and print this off, of course, from the Office logo down to Print, and I'm good to go. Then if you like what you have here, you can go ahead and click Save, save that to your desktop your merge letter. I'm going to close out not save it. And then you have your original merge letter that you can save as well. So at any time you can open this back up. In fact, let me show you how it's done. Let me go ahead and save that and close out of here. And then close out of the blank document that it pulled up on its own here. Then if I minimize this and later on I go, oh yeah, I've got this merge letter. Let me go back to the exercise folder. Double click and open up the merge letter. By default, because we linked it from Outlook, remember in Outlook where we went to Tools to Mail Merge and we clicked on Browse and we selected this uh, letter, it's now pulling data or linked to the data in Outlook, specifically from the Contacts folder. It says, do you want to be able to take that data from Outlook in the database and place it in your document? Go ahead and say yes, because if we want to go ahead and do a different mail merge but with the same data, then we have it linked and we can go ahead and make those changes. Next, we want to make sure that the coding's right. By default, just go ahead and click OK. You should be fine. And then we're back to square one. Now, if I want to pick up where I left off or make changes to this, even though it doesn't take us right to the Mailings tab, go there anyways. And then to the Start Mail Merge group, click on the Start Mail drop-down arrow and go to Step by Step. Takes us right back to Step 3. Go ahead and go through all the steps, the next steps, or go to the previous steps if you want to make some earlier changes prior to Step 3. And then when you're finished, be sure to save your work.
Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.